If you remember from the previous videos of this JavaScript series, oh, I forgot. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the JavaScript series, your formal invitation again. Moving on. If you remember from the previous videos, we were able to hold functions in a variable. To jog your memory a little bit, uh, we simply call this as, let's just say, get name. And then, or let's just say, let's call it as, say hello, that's a better one. And we were able to do something like this, a simple function that goes like this, and then it just maybe logs the value that says uh, something like this, I say hello. So notice here that in this case, we were, hold, we were able to hold the entire function as a variable. Now this is not really common for all the other programming language. This has a special name. We didn't focus much on the naming part, but this is a part of functional programming. In functional programming, functions are treated as first-class citizen. I know this is a really, really common statement, but the whole idea behind this statement is that you have a function and you treat it just like a variable. You can store that inside a variable just like we can do this. You can pass that as a parameter inside another function. You can receive it as a parameter inside another function. Now we will be taking a little bit deeper look on that. But before that, I highly recommend to watch this video that I created a while ago, which is functional programming. If you're going to search on YouTube, functional programming, and then put my name after that. And then you're going to see this video, what is functional programming easy way. It was published in January of 2020, but still it's one of the finest and easiest way to understand what is functional programming and how the functions are treated as first class citizen, what to expect, what to not. So once you're finished up watching this particular video, go ahead and watch this. We will have some of the iteration again in the future, but there is no point of creating the same video again and again when it is already available on the channel. Okay, so I hope that you will search for it probably will bookmark it and watch it later. Okay, now moving on this example that we already got, let me also cover up another topic, which is just one liner and it doesn't make sense to have another video for that. Surely it increases the video count, but that's not what I'm going after. Also, I rarely follow the thing which in which I should make videos longer than 10 minutes to attract YouTube algorithm, but I don't really care about that much. So let's just have this two line of function that says I Again, say hello. So how can you run this function? In fact, let's make it a simple function, not like this. So this one is gonna be, uh, cut this out, and we're gonna simply say, say, come on, say hello. So this is a regular function. How do you run this function? You simply go ahead and say, say hello, just like this. And if I try to run this, this is inside 05, and the file number is 03. And there we go, no problem so far. But you're gonna notice, if you have followed me for a while on this channel, you might have noticed that in one of the video where we were doing this fun web scraping, I talked a little bit about another way of executing the function. The function that call itself immediately after its declaration. We don't wait for somebody to call it. In order to do so or understand that syntax better, remember this that I told you, how does, how does the arrow function work? We go ahead and simply do like this. When we use curly braces, we most of the time use return keyword. But I told you to easy or break down the syntax in an easy way, we can use the parenthesis. So parenthesis can come at a lot of places to save your life. And in order to understand this uh, immediate execu executable function, what we can do is, first and foremost, we go up here. Uh, and wrap everything up inside the parenthesis, okay? And again, this is a syntax, you'll be using it many times. And since the topic of this particular video or this particular section that we are talking is all about self-executing anonymous function. Remember, self-executing means nobody should call it and an anonymous means it shouldn't have a name. So if it is anonymous, first and foremost, let's get rid of the name, okay? That's one part of it. We have already wrapped this up inside the pair of parentheses. And now, since it is anonymous, you have removed the name from here. There should be name should be removed from here as well. And there we go. And that's where your syntax comes in of self-executing anonymous function. It has also another name known as iffy. And uh, let me just open up this uh, documentation up here. Let me bring it up here. So if you're gonna look for these self-executing anonymous function, this is where they comes in. So you have a function, you write all of your statement, and then you execute. 
although they have very limited scope of working, but in many of the testing case, web scraping case, they are being used. I do have a video about web scraping with the JavaScript, uh, some of the fun things that we do uh, in that video. So in that case, I have used this one. Not exactly this, I have actually got one step further off it, and that's an asynchronous function, but still, it is one extreme variety of this one exactly here. So there we go, I highly recommend to read a little bit on the documentation of self-executing anonymous function, either search for this, or they call it as iffy as well, immediate, immediately invoked function expression. I think this is too much of mouthful, I think I'm gonna still call it as self-executing anonymous function, this is much better. And again, you got the syntax now that how this actually works, if you want to run it one more time, yeah, it works, it works fine. So again, to assignment, read a little bit more about these iffy or self-executing anonymous function, too many words and also go ahead and take a look on the video about functional programming and you're going to enjoy that so that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one